Welcome back everyone to some more World of Tanks. In this replay we have Peace to Win. A very fitting name uh, under this game at times, right? In the Jagdpanzer U100, the tier 10 German heavily armored tank destroyer. So, Pace to Win is actually not going to go with a very um, pay to win loadout with only standard equipment. Standard gun rammer, standard hardening, standard vents, kind of like your all-round heavy tank destroyer setup over here. Um, this is actually the setup that I recommend as well. If you want, you can switch out the vents for like a turbo aiming maybe if you feel like you're not accurate enough. Uh, but this is a setup that I like to take as well on my Jagdpanzer E100. So, Jagdpanzer E100, what is good about this vehicle? Well, it is this 170mm caliber gun. So it's not only good for overmatching stuff because of that huge caliber, but also you have a standard rounds with 299mm of penetration, 1050 alpha damage, and then you have the highest penetration rounds in the game, 420mm of heat round penetration. Um, so yes, Pace to Win is going to be against some tier 9, some tier 10 vehicles on Empire's border with a very interesting uh, start by their teammates. I mean, okay, I guess the northeast is the, uh, the interesting area of this map. But no matter, Pace to Win is going to be holding this area with a Conqueror, STB Bond 1 into the 2685, and you, you, you can just see 1095 damage, taking off more than half of the HP over the tier 10 Russian tank destroyer, which you can actually get for Bonds now after the new Bond Shop update, and now it's the Force of the tier 9 French tank destroyer, and <laughs> two thirds just just chopped off that tier 9 French DD in one shell. It's just so good. It's just so much fun. I just really love those high damage uh, kind of tank destroyers, heavy tanks as well, like the 60 TP with the 750 Alpha. Um, FV with the 1750. Can we get the T54? Indeed, 800. That's a really low roll over here, but still, it's still half to more than half of the HP of the T54. Uh, but yeah, my highest damage game actually was in this vehicle, in the Agpanzer E100. Didn't reach the 10k marks yet. Not yet. Still like 9.23k. I think that was my highest. But you can see over here why it's kind of easier to do it with these vehicles. You have the highest penetration with the 420 heat. You can do like a thousand damage every 20 seconds. It's just ridiculous. It's so, so good. There we go. 277 getting shot down by the Hori 3. Also, something I didn't really uh, touch on yet is the armor on the vehicle. So, it's it will get penned by gold rounds in the superstructure. Like, the lower part is like 275 if flat on, 285 at the top. Kind of goes like this. If you angle it like this, it can go 295 to 305-ish areas. Use the 6 degrees of gun depression, it will go to 285, 295, but it's still not very... Um, impressive. Shutting down the Forge, that is impressive. Turning and shooting, getting that Forge in two shells. I mean, the, their Forge died 100% to pace to win over here. Uh, but yeah, that superstructure, it will bounce tier 8 vehicles most of the time unless they have extremely high penetration. Tier 9 vehicles, unless they fire those um, high penetration goals. But at tier 10, you, you can actually get penned by regular rounds from some tank destroyers. Um, and goal from pretty much everything. Unless you angle. If you angle, you can bounce some stuff. Still. But, you know, it's more like to bounce those low tier vehicles. So if you do see a Jagdpanzer 100 you do have high penetration goal rounds. You can shoot that superstructure going forwards against the Leopard 1, 702 hit points. And just clutching his face. <sighs> Clean off, my goodness. I mean, he didn't take off his head with an, an Amarek. It, it, it was just... Never mind, never mind, it was a kill. It was a kill. Up to 5,200 damage. And then two kills so far. M103 bouncing a heat round off a pace to win over here, which is like I said, you can bounce those low tier vehicles. Unless they have high pen gold, which uh, maybe you will see later on in this replay, and maybe not. We're gonna have to wait and see. T54 into the face, I mean. 
You do have okay armor, I guess. Heat <laughs> around, blocked by the 2685, which is something that I was going to talk about, so I guess we can do it now, or in a second after we shut down this 2685. That cheeky 2685. Hello, and goodbye <laughs> into the upper plate with the heat. Um, yeah, you need to angle your vehicle a bit. Something like this, you know, then this area is actually going to be around 270 millimeters of effective armor, but. But, as you can see, these tracks are very wide, and that means that if you get shot with heat, it will just get absorbed. You will have 300 and something effective armor on the superstructure. No plate will be 290-ish, and the track area will be 260-70, but heat rounds will get absorbed. So that is something to look out for if they fire heat. You can angle a bit more, you know, try to be cheeky with those chunky boy tracks, the side scans that block a lot of the... He drowns, oh my goodness, T95, not going through the side over here, luckily, but we go through 994, was it? My goodness, I didn't see. Didn't even notice, but still, half of the T95's HP, and I love what the Udas 1516 is doing over here. A lovely play, pushing forwards, getting around the T95, and pace to win is not going to be greedy. Like, you can go forwards and shut down this T95, if you like, but why take a 750 damage shell, you know? That is not what we want. That is not what we like, so, so we're just going to let the Udez, which is played by a battle bird over here, uh, get the kill. Is it bad? There's actually two Udezes, there's in a platoon, I, I think it was battle bird, I'm not sure anymore though, I don't know anymore, but there we go, put one into the G1006, Sh shutting down, taking off two thirds of the tier 9 British wheeled medium. And yeah, this Conqueror that lost his head is now the perfect hull down vehicle. It was Battle Bird, actually, okay. I'm not making a mistake here yet. Anyway, the Northeast, you know, that area that had pretty much all of our vehicles over there, has actually collapsed. We have only a CC Mark II in the north, a Wolfen Trigger Panzer IV in the east, and a TVPT 5051 in the center. But it's like. How many people were there? Ten before? Two remaining? Yes, this is a not good, not good. Down by th two vehicles now. It was three, it is two vehicles now. And uh, a bit of HP. We don't know exactly how much because some of these vehicles were outside of the render range and then you can't really see how much HP they have. The Waffen truck is outside of the render, render range as well. So we do not know any of the info that we have over there. But Pace to Win is going forwards. Trying to take the fight to the enemy team, which is exactly what you need to do. You can't just sit still. You can't just wait for the enemies to take the fight to you. you need to be aggressive, isolate them, get them one by one by one by one. And, uh, yeah. Just go for the kills. M103 actually going with the heat round through the turret, but unlucky the shell is going in to the Capola of that M103. Very weak spot on the tier 9. American heavy tank over there. T95 E6 and 40 shots down the Waffen truck, and now it's only pays to win and battle bird against five of the enemy vehicles, and one of them is a T95 E6 on five kills. But, but pays to win is with five kills as well. Over 8,000 damage. Oh no. Bluebird, battle bird, not bluebird, battle bird, you can do it against two vehicles over there, finishing off the Skoda T50. Now in a 1v1 with the G1006, but pace to win is going towards the base, going to defend the base, thinking maybe the T95, the Shars, might try to be cheeky and sneaky and go for the cap, which is actually what you need to do exactly, and it's exactly what they're doing. There's one of them though, getting one of the Shars, that was actually a heat round that could have been absorbed by the Rex in the way, so the Rex, I mean soft cover in the way, so that was a good shot, not trying to shoot through the stuff. But actually directly at the Shah. Well played. Pace to win. But now it's two people in the camp circle. 25 seconds left. Oh no. Can Pace to win rigid in time. Battlebird is still searching for the G saw towards the center of the map. This is not good. 19 seconds. 18. If they just hide behind the rock, this game is most likely over. What is the enemy team going to do? There's the T95. Six seconds. One into the T95. And there we go. Oh no. Three vehicles in the cap now. And yeah. This game is over, unfortunately. No time for the reload, no time to push forwards, but... Wait, what? 
the T95 V6 actually left the camp and now it's just the G Swan, the Shah over there. I know the G Swan is the water center, the, the, the Shah is the one with all of the uh, the cap points. Need to go forwards. Five, four, three, two. Get the shot in one. And we get the Shah 54 at the last second. I mean, Pace the Wind knew that. This is it for them. You know, it was all or nothing. Trying to get a ram in the T95 V6, unfortunately being too sneaky with that and getting shot down over here but Battlebird Battlebird can you do it can Battlebird save us over here get the win can we switch we cannot switch unfortunately oh we're gonna have to wait and see there we go switching automatically to Battlebird in the US 1516 1v2 two of them are one shots there's the G saw the G saw has a small gun bound but finishes him off and Battlebird now in a 1v1 versus, versus the T95 V6. Okay. Okay, you can take a hit. T95 V6 has 400 alpha damage. That means he needs an extremely high roll to finish you off with one shot. 29 HP. 482 HP. You see is saying in the chat, load HP, you can take a shot, just push. Is that what Battlebird is going to do? Taking a hit and actually finishing off the T95 E6. GG, well played Battlebird. And it was just, it was just lovely defense by both of them. Haste to win, focusing the right people, seeing the T95 V6 inside the cap, shooting that first, pushing forward. Luckily, the T95 actually left the cap circle. I have no idea why uh, the enemy T95 did that. They had only like 10 seconds left on the cap with three vehicles inside the cap circle. The Yag Panzer can't reload in 10 seconds, but because he left, it actually let Pace to win. Push forwards, find the Shah Fitter 4, which you could actually know has more cap points because the GSO was spotted towards the center while the cap was going on. So pace to win with great awareness, pushing forwards, not caring about the rage HP whatsoever, going for the win, hoping that Battlebird will be able to carry this one to a victory, and they did. So yeah, GG, well played. Great game by both Battlebird pace to win and 11,000 damage and 7 kills with the win what else do you need with this chunky boy Yangpan's E100 um, but yeah I guess we should go and check out the post game stats next let's do this there we go easy ace tanker for this 1436 base XP earned for the Yangpan's E100 Defend medal for getting 100 defense points. High caliber for the 11,194 damage done. Always nice to see those five numbers. Always fun. Tank sniper for dealing 3,000 damage in 300 meters or more. Top gun for six kills or more. Seven. In this case, taking first in pretty much every single category over here. Firing 14 shells. Hitting 14 shells. Penetrating 14 shells, so this is a perfect game. This is just a perfect Jack Panzer 100 game in more ways than one. The awareness, the use of the armor, penetrating every single shot, it's just perfection. Like I said, 11,194 damage, 3,089 from a distance of more than 300 meters, 14 hits received, 7 pen, 7 did not, like I said, Using the armor very effectively, 3.3 almost thousand damage blocked by the armor, which is enough to finish this vehicle, plus half another vehicle, pretty much. Um, 11 of the enemy vehicles are damaged, 7 of those were destroyed by pace to win, 100 defense points. Actually, 1.84 kilometers traveled. You don't really travel too much with this vehicle, it's, it's not the fastest, you know, that 30 kilometers out of top speed. Um, bad engine uh, power to weight, engine power, bad terrain resistances, doesn't make this a very mobile vehicle. But when you do need to drive around, you will drive around, I guess. And yeah, losing credits, of course. I mean, when you fire only gold at tier 10, you don't really make credits, um, even when everything penetrated, I guess. So, 4,308 total XP, 216 free XP earned over here. In this 9 minutes 51 seconds until a destroyed and 10 minutes and 50 second battle. Anyway, this is it. GG. Well played. Pace to win. Amazing game with an amazing vehicle. One of my favorites to play all the time. It's just so much fun playing the Yang Panzer 100 uh, 
whenever you want some big chunky boy damage shots. Uh, but yeah, this is it for this video. So let me know in the comments down below. What do you think of the Angpanzeri 100? Do you think it's good, too good, not good enough? Uh, yeah, let me know your thoughts, your opinions down below. And as always, thank you so much everyone for watching. You're awesome. Stay awesome. Stay safe. And hopefully I will see you all in the next video. Tatas people, have a good one.